Welcome to Drawn Onward, a production of TeresaJansen.com. I'm your host, Teresa Jansen, and today I'll be interviewing Michelle Rayburn, the editor of the newly released Life Repurposed, Stories of Grace, Hope, and Restored Faith. Welcome to Drawn Onward. I am your host, Teresa Jansen, and today I'm really excited to have with me the editor for Life Repurposed, the new anthology that has just released, Michelle Rayburn. So welcome, Michelle. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to connect with you. Well, I'm so excited to be a part of the book along with 33 other amazing stories. So thank you for putting this project together. You're welcome. It's such an honor to be able to hear the diversity in the stories, to hear what God is doing around the world in the lives of women. And so my prayer is that many people will be blessed by reading your story and the others. I believe definitely so. And even though the stories are so diverse, I have already noticed in the ones that I've read there, the common thread of God's redemptive story and God's redemptive hope going through the stories, which is amazing. Start us off just with uh, the history as to how this project came about, if you would. So I had the idea for the book last year, and it was one of those things where God put it in my mind. I get these creative ideas from him sometimes, and sometimes I say yes right away. Sometimes I think about it. This was one where I said yes right away. And it was a spinoff off of something that God has put on my heart for many years. I started out doing a trash to treasure decorating blog where I shared before and after pictures of things I picked up at garage sales and I would decorate them and put the photos on my blog. And then I realized that there was so much more to this, this idea of repurposing, of restoring, of taking something old and making it new. And so I started to include some spiritual lessons among some of my decorating blogs. And eventually that turned into this whole idea of a life repurposed. And last year I had this idea of featuring other people's stories because for years I've been telling my own story and people get sick of hearing it after a while. You know, it's like, yeah, there's that Michelle Rayburn. I've heard of her before, Uh, or maybe they never have. But anyway, I thought there are so many great stories out there of women and so many different ways that God works in our lives that I wanted to be able to feature a bunch. And I decided to feature 30 and then so many great stories came in. I had to tell people no. And I finally just added four more in to make 34 because I I couldn't leave out ones that I felt like someone needed to hear. Well, when I read your call for submissions and what you were looking for, I said, oh my goodness, that is my life. And I knew that I was really meant to write that story. And I ended up writing a story that I've never told before. And it was a little bit scary for me. And uh, yeah. And now I'm just amazed that it's not only my story. There are so many people that God has repurposed, restructured, refreshed, renewed, all of it. It's amazing. Yeah. In so many different ways. So if I tell my story, that's one version. And I don't have like this dramatic before and after as far as like not growing up knowing about Christ. I grew up in a Christian home, but God has done dramatic things in my life and transformed me in ways. But then someone else has a story where they grew up in a different type of scenario. And then God did something else in their life. I mean, we have stories in the book about somebody who was uh, formerly a gang member. And then we have people who have talked about loss, like grieving and loss and infertility. And there's so many different versions of how God repurposes, but yours really resonated with me because you talked about feeling disqualified because of something in your past. And I have met so many people that have that version of a story, how somehow they felt that God would disqualify them from serving him if they had made mistakes. I grew up thinking that there was this fear that if I make a big enough mistake, God's going to say, you can't serve me anymore. Yeah. And I really had this feeling like um, I had ruined God's plan for my life. And then now looking back, I, I think about it like, really, do I really think I'm that powerful or that I, (laughs) you know, can, that I can actually ruin God's plan. Um, Of course, I think, 
yeah, there you can have things not go the way that God would have preferred that things right. go. I mean, definitely he doesn't want us to take broken, sinful paths. That's for sure. But we can see how God repurposes and brings yes. things even more beautiful, more yes. purposeful after the brokenness. Yes. I just love the concept of the book and all the stories together. And the art is amazing. I can tell that you're such a creative person. No, oh, thank you. It was a joy to create it. Talk a little bit about how the book is launching and when, uh, um, what we can look for in these coming days, because this is that time when it's uh, going to launch to the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. So it's available on Amazon right now, but the international distribution is still coming. So I'm working on getting that completed. It takes a little bit longer, but I didn't want to wait to officially launch it because I just wanted to get the word out. So on April 12, we'll have a online launch party where some of the authors will feature their stories. But right now I'm just enjoying watching each author in the book share and celebrate with friends and just start to tell their stories. So that's part of it is connecting with each person who wrote a story in the book and hearing what it is that they can teach someone else. Well, you really did an amazing job of compiling these stories. I cannot even imagine what that task was like, because that's a lot of words to read and edit and pray about and all of that. Um, did do you have a team of people who help you or it was this really, <laughs> you, it's wow. really is a solo thing? Um, yeah. So I, I would love to have a team. Actually, I have a personal assistant now who's helping with a few things, but yeah, that would be a, oh, a wish list thing. So if you were going to say um, who this book is really designed for, what's your, what's the target audience really? I had in mind a woman who's between the ages of like 30 and 45, somebody who's in those years of like, I've already completed college, but now I'm exploring what God has next for me. Also juggling all those things that come in those years of raising kids or starting a career or changing careers, all that busy stuff that comes before the empty nest phase. I also have met a lot of women in that age group who have struggled with their identity and who does God think I am? How do I reconcile things from my past? And so I had that all in mind when I was thinking about this audience, that this is somebody who still has many years left to change direction and do something brand new in their life, wherever God sends them. So if there is one takeaway, and I don't know if there can be one takeaway from 34 <laughs> stories, but if there's one takeaway that you are really hoping that people get from this book, you know, just give us that. Oh yeah. If I, I think if I had to sum it up into one short phrase, it would be, there is always hope. Hmm. I want somebody to understand that and hope encompasses so many things. That's God's grace is under that. God's love is under that forgiveness is under that. So there's always hope in that this is not the end of my story. Wherever I am today, there is always more to be written. And when I join up with God on that journey, it becomes beautiful. So no matter what ugliness we have, whatever we try to fix on our own, like when kids try to clean up a mess, you know, it like actually gets messier when they clean up spilled milk. God cleans it up and there's always hope when we invite him into that process. Well, tell me what's coming up next for you. I know right now, of course, you're focused completely on this book launch. I have all kinds of ideas. <laughs> so I have a Bible study that I've, I worked on before and it was published and then the publisher uh, closed. And so I can re-release that and edit it. I have some ideas for other women's Christian living books an audio book. And so I just, I keep praying like, God, which one of these am I supposed to pursue first? Because he gives me all kinds of ideas. Well, tell us how can we connect with the book project, more about um, repurposed life, all of your social media, things like that. Yeah. The best place to connect with me is just to go to michellerayburn.com. I have links there to the podcast that's called Life Repurposed and the book and social media links. So that's the easiest place to connect. I am really enjoying the Life Repurposed podcast also, by the way, just a Thank really you. great uh, resource also for people. 
Thank you. Yeah. I love your drawn onward. I love how it's a palindrome, which is really cool, but I, I like that because that fits so well with the concept of a life repurposed in that God does draw us onward that there is, you know, we're moving towards him all the time. So I'm not here to promote a book so much as I am to promote God's story in each one of us and how he draws us to him. And that's exactly how I feel. And so I I knew from the very moment I read the call for submissions that we were kindred spirits in a lot of ways. So I'm so glad that you were able to be here today and to share with us a little bit about the book. In the um, coming weeks, I'll be interviewing more of the authors. And I know that you will on uh, your podcast as well. So we'll hear more of the stories, but I actually bought the Kindle version of the book so I could get my hands on it right away. And good, I'm, yeah, and I've, I've read some of the stories already and um, actually really feel touched and impacted already, even myself. So thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate you um, taking time and really the time to do the book. That's I'm so grateful because I think God has um, a way of using our stories together even more than individually. Yes. Drawn Onward is more than an amazing palindrome. It's a production of TeresaJansen.com. 